All right, everyone. Welcome to the November 28th meeting of SIG Apps. Um, I'll be running the show today. I don't think Michelle's going to be able to make it. Um, I'm Matt Farina, for anybody who doesn't know me. And it says in the participants, uh, SIG Apps. Um, so before we get started with everything else, um, we do have meeting minutes and notes. I'll share the link in chat to everybody. If you want to add notes as we go along, such as something in the demo or stand up or help with that, uh, it would be appreciated. Um, uh, other notes here is we have a demo slot open for December 12th if anybody's interested in demoing something. Uh, it would be alongside, we'd originally planned to have a demo of um, OpenStack on Helm by SAP, but unfortunately the person who was going to give that um, is out today and not able to do that. Um, then the other thing to know is Kubernetes 1.5 Beta 2 is out if anybody wants to go take a look at that. And so with that, we have demos. And do we have somebody on to talk about external daemon sets or the upgrade for the upgrade controller? Or, um, I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering that. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, so uh, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Um, one second. Okay, can you see uh, my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, so uh, my name is Łukasz Olaś and I'm from Mirantis and I'm working on demo set uh, upgrades and because it uh, didn't get into 1.5, uh, I created separate uh, controller, controller for upgrades. And I will show you how it's working. Uh, there is a repository. Um, I'm passing a link to, uh, in chat to, uh, to the code in, on GitHub. Okay, so I'm using uh, this uh, Docker in Docker uh, cluster, and I have five, five nodes. And I have, uh, I will create a uh, demo set. And uh, it looks like a normal uh, demo set. I just added two annotations. One annotation says that this will use a rolling update strategy and that only one node can be unavailable during the, during the upgrades. Mm. Okay, so I'm, I created the one set. Uh, there are five pods running. And now I will uh, uh, show you which image is used. Uh, so uh, uh, it's using Nginx as an image. And 
ein Zündchen äh, gibt. As, as you can see, now it's uh, deleting old uh, pods and uh, demo controller is creating uh, new pods. And now if I, when I list the uh, images, you can see that uh, uh, that uh, image was upgraded. And if you want to uh, see the history of changes, I'm storing the changes using spot templates. And the one is from old, uh, from the previous uh, my my test, my previous previous tests. Uh, so I can uh, list uh, each uh, change has a aggregation number. And in. Uh, Okay, so uh, something doesn't work, but <laughs> I can edit this data store and uh, roll back to previous previous revision. To do this, I need to use uh, another annotation. So I'm just using rollback two, and I will rollback to to revision one. Okay, I broke something. <laughs> like that must not, never work. Are you planning on adding this in the QPCTL 4.6 or it's going to be in a controller implementation? Um, to add it to QPCTL, I, it has to be merged in 1.6, so it depends if, if you merge it. <laughs> Is Brian on the call? I'm here. Um, and I might be able to speak to that. I know we should, I should probably talk offline about that, but <clears throat> we should figure out if this belongs in the client side or server side or what the right approach is. I mean, honestly, like if we're going to go do that, we should write up a proposal. Like, again, like there's no difference between daemon sets and stateful sets in terms of the use cases. We know that we have a use case for deployment. 
where we want to drive an update. There's a lot of overlapping concepts here. If we all think that this is important, like we need to put a proposal together that kind of draws these things in. And I think most of the concerns up till now have been about timing and making sure there's enough design review to get there. So I, I do think like it's good to show this. And I think this is a good example of how this can be done. And we need to reach agreement on like the actual API presentation of it if we want to put it into Cube itself. And that's been the blocker the whole time, I think. Is there anybody attempting to wrangle folks together to come to a common methodology behind this? I think that the, the concern has always been just around making, like it's a deployment took a huge amount of design resources or a, a huge amount of design time. And so it's really a commitment on bandwidth of like from an API review perspective, from like a project philosophical perspective. So I think we need someone from this SIG to be the wrangler. And then we need to make sure that we have the, the right people who have the familiarity with the design side on deployments to be able to offer feedback. Um, a proposal really like, I, I kind of, my gut's telling me like in the one six timeframe, getting a proposal agreed on would be a really concrete step if we want to put this in Cube Core, but we can continue to iterate on this as a as a third party controller for quite a while if we want to. Yeah, I agree. We would have this as a third party controller, and as Clayton already said, this has lots of concepts uh, similar to deployments. Um, and even though deployments are still in beta, we. It, we will have deployment configs in OpenShift and they are stable. Um, so there are some stuff that we kind of know already how to do them. Um, we just need feed, feed more feedback on them. Yeah, another thing that I thought of while, while showing this is I think um, a lot of the, the things about upgrades are the same across all, of, all three of the things we would talk about. Stateful sets, um, deployments, daemon sets, any future resource. And so the more and more types that we add like that, the more complex controllers that get added, the more that we're gonna have a desire to be able to say, hey, this is exactly like the other two, let's go and apply the same pattern. And it just seems like that, that's a big, like, you know, we said stateful sets was one of like the big objectives from a one, four and one, five timeframe, um, getting concrete deployments in over a one, six and one time, seven timeframe or, you know, I don't want to say exact time frames, but it seems like there's a lot of desire to get to that point for both stateful sets and daemon sets. So it's really just about getting a plan together for one six to get as to get the consensus we need from a design consensus. And if we don't have time to do that, that'll have to leak into one seven as well. Okay. No, uh, yeah, if this makes sense. Um, does somebody want to spearhead the Damon sets proposal and getting everything ready? It'll take a bit of work and time. Well, from what I remember, we agreed that we are going to create another meeting to discuss the, all this stuff. Like, um, yeah, on KubeCon, I spoke with, 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 with uh, yeah, with, uh, with Brian and with, with Clayton. So from what I remember, that was the agreement that we also discussed this on the Kubernetes Slack. I don't remember when, but like week ago or something. Okay. So I suppose that's the way because as, as, as they already mentioned, there is a lot of overlapping parts between deployment demo sets and uh, stateful sets or in terms of updates. And I would like to add, just add that I cannot see it as a client side update because if you have like 1000 Kubernetes cluster, I don't believe that the inside update is gonna work because it will take kind of forever. <laughs> I think that does get a little bit though into, um, we originally created rolling upgrade as a client side command to try and enable people to go scripts more custom flows. And we stepped back a little bit from that once we had deployment. Um, but I would argue that the scenario we're in right here is if we had a clear rolling upgrade command that could deal with um, a chunk of pods. It would be a, an example of 
why would we not upgrade rolling upgrade to support some of the same scenarios across both stateful sets and uh, and uh, daemon sets first. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I agree. The um, the server side solution, I think. Well, talking from my experience with deployments, the server side solution was a lot more robust there and ended up in a better product and took way, way, way longer to implement and several different releases of refinement um, before it was uh, fully functional. And um, so. And the funny part is, is like when we look at deployments, we're like, there's still a whole bunch of features that make them very important that aren't implementable in deployments, like perm failure and um, and custom strategies. So I think we're already we're already in the spot where it took a really long time to get deployments right, and we just have to assume it's going to take a long amount of time to get the server side logic right. In the meantime, would it be better to have something client side than to have nothing? I mean, did, does people, do people, I mean, like, Philip, like, I don't know what your take on rolling upgrade was, but I know we had problems with it, but some of the problems were dealing with an infinite amount of edge cases, but we had to know about all those edge cases when we turned around and put them in deployments, right? Well, in the other hand, there is already possibility to do client side demos and updates because you can basically kill, like, code one by one and it will kind of work, right? So I'm, I'm not clearly sure if there is a need to create client side implementation of demos and updates, like completely separate one. Well, I mean, it's already kind of possible, right? So I keep on. Maybe an example would be for both daemon sets and stateful sets, there's a concrete use case of we want to remove the old pod without creating a new one at the same time. Could we, could we implement a mode for rolling upgrade that looks at the selector set does percentage based or input based um, bulk rollover and is a reentrant process because unlike the old replica set or uh, replication controller rolling upgrade um, staple sets and pet sets or staple sets and daemon sets were trying to help converge on the actual state in the cluster Yeah, and, and to be clear, I'm not advocating for doing a client side approach. Um, but I agree with Clayton that we should talk about timelines and relative complexity and figure out what the best solution is. And Clayton, to answer your question, um, I, I think in my last conversation with Brian, we kind of <clears throat> were thinking that client side logic could be like beta development or sort of like kind of alpha logic where the long term plan is never to build logic into the client side, but in cases such as this one where something is takes maybe a tenth of the time to implement on the client side, it might be a good way to spearhead it. Certainly anything that doesn't require an API change, there's maybe a pragmatic benefit to giving people a tool that they can use to refine. I mean, I, I, I don't want to oversell the idea that we would use this as a prototyping tool. But I mean, if for instance, there was, if Q control rolling upgrade or whatever it was, worked on daemon sets and you could specify three free parameters, would that effectively solve the, and could handle like ready checks and so forth, would that effectively solve the daemon set problem in the short term for a large class of administrators or would it be not enough? And we don't have to answer that here, I just, I, it, it really struck me talking about this that we it's in, like everybody wants some variant here and I think the controller is very useful as well. Um, it's, it's a real problem that someone has today if they're running a cluster with daemon sets. You know, maybe it's possible to take the, the pragmatic approach and to roll something into, you know, kubectl in the short term um, to handle this while in parallel working on the long-term server-side solution. And if it could even be different folks who are collaborating and not working on it. Um, but I think solving it in the short term, uh, even if it's not optimal, is probably better, especially if it doesn't take an API change. Does someone want to take the to-do to open an issue? 
um, and we can talk and propose it in an issue and just add the SIG on it. Nobody? McCollis, do you want to do it? Sure, I will do it. Also, I wanted uh, to, to ask another question, maybe a topic for uh, uh, the six CLI is, um, should we formalize the way of uh, having experimental commands that we are going to push uh, uh, in the server at some point? Like it shouldn't be a part of kubectl or maybe a, a separate command in kubectl experimental that has all these experimental commands. It's a great question. That'd probably be a six CLI question. Okay. Yeah, so I, I will open to separate issues. Yeah, and, and I wonder does if a plugin architecture would help make some of this a little bit easier where plugins can come and go and, and that kind of thing where it's not official. Yeah, the, the plugin proposal definitely, there's been a lot of discussion in that this could be an example of a use case for it. Um, maybe, maybe the broader question is, is if we add an API resource that can't be updated without you going and writing a complex script around it um, or writing any script around it or is that enough? Like when we talk about alpha and beta for the things that SIG apps or other SIGs might introduce, do we need to put a stronger bar on the usability of the thing before we go into beta, for instance? And what we've said, like we went into beta for staple sets without having updates and that was an explicit choice. Um, we certainly won't exit beta for staple sets without, um, without updates. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so we, we have a concrete action out of this, uh, which is good. And it was a good demo. Thank you for sharing. I think uh, upgrading daemon sets is important. So thank you very much for the demo. Uh, that was worthwhile. So um, is there anything else we want to touch on with daemon sets and upgrades before we move into our other discussions? Going once, twice, three times. I can... Oh. I can I wanted to add that we have like we have recorded demo working demo like instead of that one that crashed we have recorded working demo and Lukas was showing it it's recorded on ASCII cinema you can find it in the, our um, GitHub repository so you can you can see it how it works there. Can you drop so that into uh, chat and I will add it to the document for anybody who wants to come. I, over. Already, I already added it to the meeting minutes. Oh. And to the agenda so it's it's somewhere there I don't remember where it was but. I I don't. Yeah, see I Okay. I posted the link to the repository and it's in the readme file, so. Ah, okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And I saw that you shared it while we were having that conversation. That was useful, thank you. Okay, so the next thing, we've got a, a few different stand-ups to talk about what's going on. Uh, Matt Butcher, are you on the line to talk about Helm? Yep, I am. I can't operate my mouse, but I'm here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, uh, the Helm project uh, was pretty low key last week given the uh, holiday week in the United States, um, but we have several uh, patches in for 2.01. Actually, I think we only have two patches in there. Um, and then there's been some substantial work on 2.1.0, which will be our next feature release. Uh, right now, the team is trying to sort of assess if there are any other bugs we want to try and get in the 2.01 release. And if there are, uh, we'll, we'll stay that release for a bit. Uh, if not, uh, we'll release those. For those who, who haven't followed closely, our policy on uh, patch releases is we cut them as needed, uh, whereas the 2.1 release is officially a scheduled release and won't be released until it's feature complete. Uh, so uh, activity seems to be way up in the channel. Um, Thank you to the community for jumping in and helping each other solve problems over this long weekend when a lot of us in the States have been AWOL or away with leave, I should say. Uh, so thank you very much, and we'll just keep on going. I know the holiday season will have us uh, low-staffed, as every open source project knows, uh, you know, when there are a lot of holidays coming up. Uh, people are, are tending to kind of come in and out. 
but we don't officially have a release on the radar until January. We might cut early if we get finished early, uh, just to relieve some stress on the team, uh, but that's kind of where we're at. That's all I got. Thank you. Do we have somebody on to talk about um, the Kubernetes charts repo? I can, I can talk about it. Thank you. Um, so last week, I think there were three mergers into stable charts. That was RabbitMQ, um, Own Cloud, and MongoDB. So if anybody's looking to play with those apps, uh, get your hands on them now. Uh, we made the, the maintainers changed a little bit of the way that they were merging and tagging things in the repo, which is, is good progress on collaboration there. Uh, the only issue uh, that's outstanding that's a big ticket item is as we move through the storage annotations changing in 1.3 and 1.4 and 1.5 and beyond, it's, it's become a little bit of a blocker for some folks across different cluster types uh, to use uh, PVs. So we're, we're working on coming to an agreement, whether it's annotation based or um, actually in the charts.yaml as to how to place those annotations down on the cluster. Um, thank you for being patient there. Uh, it is a little bit difficult with uh, the storage annotations being a, a moving target, um, but hopefully we'll get a resolution fairly soon on that and people can just consume the charts regardless of what version of Kubernetes cluster they're running on. Uh, so they're the big ticket items out there and thank you everybody who's contributing us some great charts coming in. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the update and the hard work on um, charts. Uh, do we have somebody on to talk about stateful sets, formerly known as pet set? Eric's on. Eric, do you want to talk about him? Eric, are you there? I swear he was on the chat briefly. wonder if he had to drop. Yeah, I see him in chat there, but I don't see him on anymore. I think he must have dropped off. OK. Um, uh, Janet, are you on? I don't see Janet. I don't, oh, no, Janet, you're on. Um, yes. You're gonna give? So for a stable set, we're now um, making more adding more documents and fixing some test failures. And we have a stateful set document plan in a Google Doc shared with the community. So if anyone have time, they can help us um, make those documents. Can you share a link to to where I can find that, or maybe I can contribute some documentation. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe Kubernetes dev. I can share. I, I can check that again and update in the um, meeting notes today. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I appeared. To, did anybody hear me? Nope. All right. Right now we can hear you. Now you more. can hear me. Perfect. So it doesn't appear we have anybody on to talk about Compose. And so uh, here's what's uh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, you are. Perfect. 
I don't know, hear you before, so. Yeah. Oh, sure. no, that's oh. all right. I, I, I might have been muted. It may very easily have been my fault. Go ahead. Okay. So, hi, I'm Tomasz Krau. So, I would like to give you a quick status about Compose and where we are at. Because uh, Tuna did a quick demo here in the SIGAPS meeting in September. And since then, Compose joined Kubernetes Incubator and we added a bunch of new features. Uh, some of them, for example, you can choose a service type that's generated by Compose using labels in Docker Compose files. Or we added, added support for persisted volume claims. So you can choose if volume is going to be converted to persistent volume claim or just empty dir. And currently we are working uh, mostly on improving test tests because we have very poor test coverage. So we are trying to do something with that. And we are also fighting a little bit with Go rendering because we have a lot of dependencies in Compose because we have dependencies on quite a few things from Kubernetes and from OpenShift. So we are starting to looking into reducing number of dependencies. And we also had some issues with Go Depths. So we are also thinking about uh, switching to Glide and it should make something a little bit easier for us. If you have questions about Glide, feel free to bug. Uh, I'll volunteer uh, uh, Matt Butcher and myself. Feel free to bug us if you have questions. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Thank you. And congratulations on getting into the incubator. I'm, I'm glad to see this moving along. Yeah, thank you. And do we have anyone to talk about App Controller? Yeah, for sure. I will, I will share the status in terms of app controller. So basically, like in the last week, we were focusing a lot in new types, which are required. Like we added config maps, we are going to add secrets, we are going to add the services. I follow this, the, the name of this resource, not services, but the other stuff. Uh, yeah, we also like improved some, like improves the way how you can add new resources types to, to app controller. So it's easier and easier. And we are preparing to make this, uh, Hacky, hacky integration of Helm. Let's name it integration. So yeah, I suppose that we are going to start this activity this this week. So yeah, we will see how it will work, how how it will go, and yeah, that's that's basically the status in terms of our controller. So thank you very much. Thank you. So under uh, scheduled discussion topics, we have one, and that is uh, where are we at at compiling Kubernetes best practices? Um, I think I had originally had an action to get something going. Unfortunately, I've been um, fairly busy, and that has kept me away from that. Uh, has anybody else taken up anything that's in the area of compiling Kubernetes best practices around writing and building apps for Kubernetes and operating them? Is there anybody interested in helping get this going? I'll take silence as. Um, Nate, uh, you want to give a little more explanation for what you're what you're thinking this would cover? Because I think I, for one, have forgotten since last week. Uh, good, good question, Matt. Uh, so the idea, if I remember right, is you know if you're writing um, applications meant to run in Kubernetes or operating applications in Kubernetes, what are the best practices? A lot of what we do at that level um, is transferred via tribal knowledge, or you know, in chat rooms and blog posts anywhere. There isn't a formal place that says, "Here's how we recommend," or "Here's how folks are actually doing things." And so you got people sometimes creating their own ways and their own niches that are similar and struggling to figure stuff out on their own. Right? It's it's a little bit of a, an art to operating the applications in there, and there isn't a place where you go to say, "Here's my best practices." If I'm coming into Kubernetes to do it. Yeah, I'd ask in SIG apps. That's a good question. Um, so, uh, 
All right, Matt. So Matt, um, I'll, I'll send out an email to the list as well to see if we can get a few folks together to just start coming up with what this would be. Um, yeah, and I know there's some existing materials um, from Red Hat here. Um, when you send that email out, I'll make sure that the folks who have been involved with the various efforts can reply um, with any existing materials that we can help fold in uh, in the gather phase. All right, will do. Thank you. Um, and so with that, uh, we had one more item, which was discussed the SIG survey, Eric, but I think Michelle mark that off because you would have time next week to talk about it. Um, we can do it now or then. Um, uh, we have time now if you want to, how long is it going to take? Do you think? About we, 20 minutes? Uh, we could try to, we could go over it, but not complete it in 10 minutes and then complete on next time. People have time to think about it. <clears throat> All right, then the floor is yours. Go ahead. All right. And the, one of the first questions that all the SIGs were asked was, what percentage of your SIGs code do you think has test coverage? And you were supposed to fit into one of four quartiles. I guess the first question for us is, what code do we think our SIG owns? Do we all, does anyone think that we don't own all of the server side parts of the controllers, like Damon said and Stateful said and, um, and such. Silence means we all agree with that statement, I guess. And, and we don't have SIG deployment anymore, right? SIG deployment was folded into this. Okay, I'll take that as a no. Do we, is anyone here? Did you, have, hear, uh, did you hear Clayton's question? I did hear Clayton's question. Uh, and I didn't hear anyone speak up about SIG deployments. Uh, I think all of the participants of, of SIG deployment are on this call. So I think the answer, I, I would probably agree with what you're saying, Eric. I don't know of any, I don't know of anyone else who would argue that they own that in any of the other SIGs for sure. Does anyone who's worked on controller code want to offer an opinion as to whether test coverage is poor, good, awesome? All right, well, let's, if you do work on controller code in the next week, let's reflect on that and try to come see if we can form an opinion by next week. So two of the other things, if you're looking for other stuff, we have uh, obviously Helm and charts. Mm -hmm. So does someone from Helm want to t talk about how good the Helm tool itself test coverage is? I'm actually not sure if we if we have that info. If we did, Adam Reese would be the one that has it. It could even be a gut feeling like, yeah, we should write more tests. <laughs> Isn't the gut feeling always supposed to be we should write more tests? We have... We have decent coverage. Commits are supposed to come in with tests, so uh, I would I would not wager that we're above seventy five percent. Okay, but, but it's I decent. Would wager that we're well above fifty percent. So, and then for charts, I heard we're still kind of waiting for charts to all have built in sort of sanity checks in them. Uh, has that there been any progress on that? I think we're waiting, Eric, on actually having the test framework implemented at Helm. So at the moment, we test that we can install a chart, um, but we can't test that it's actually doing something the same. Right. So you're saying that both each chart would need to have some kind of like script that does the testing, and the Helm tool itself would need to have a command to execute that script? Exactly. And I think that's, that's slated to be implemented. Yeah, that's on the 2.1 slash 2.2 roadmap. Uh, it's okay. The vector phase of it. And once that's done, we'll ask that, you know, all the charts that are submitted actually have some way to test that the app that's being installed is in a state that's usable. Um, I think that's the only ask that you can get time to value with the charts, not that you test every permeation of failure. You know, 
<laughs> okay. So we could say for now that charts are sort of in the lower percentile range for now. Yeah, you, they make sure that they work against a given API, a Kubernetes API, but, and, and don't return one, but that's it. It doesn't make sure of the application. So yeah, I'd say none at the application level. Okay. Um, can, what about the amount of time we spend talking, responding to user issues on GitHub, Stack Overflow, et cetera? How many people maybe by a show of plus ones in chat, like spend some significant amount of time doing like public user support rather than like paying co company customer user support for things related to SIG apps? Can I get a show of plus ones? Cool, okay, so Helm, I see some plus ones. So again, sounds like, okay, cool. Seeing some controllers. So I'm just trying to take a couple notes at the same time. Sorry for the dead air. Um, so then, do we think that people like that we're spending enough time on st that we're spending the right amount of time on features versus stability? Anyone want to comment on whether or not we're spending more time on features or more time on stability of the code? And this could be controllers or Helm or charts or anything. I can probably comment for Helm. Um, I think we're currently split just about evenly between stability and features, but largely that's because of where we are on our roadmap. We just cut a stable release and about half of us are dedicated to keeping stable and while another half to developing features. I anticipate that stability man hour, person hours will probably drop a little bit um, and, and it'll hold in that pattern for probably the 2.0 life cycle. And then, so it'll probably end up at 40, 60, or possibly uh, 30, 70, if we get really good. You describe it as a good balance right now? I would say it's a, it's a really good balance right now. We're very happy. Anyone want to speak for controllers? I can speak for the, for the jobs and cron jobs. Uh, I mostly focused on stabilizing uh, on job throughout the the closing release mostly um, there are a few features that I would like to implement so that we can actually um, promote cron jobs over to uh, to beta uh, but the, it's usually lower priority uh, stabilizing the uh, stabilizing the controller at this current form is is probably more important at this point and and for jobs, I think we're we're pretty good with jobs. Uh, there's not that many problems with jobs itself, but that's just for the two controllers that I operate with. I can speak for uh, deployments. So in the past year, we have uh, I have worked on like uh, two single features, uh, which one is proportional scaling that Brian wanted, and the other one is the pro progress deadline second that we added lately for uh, reporting failure conditions in the deployment status. Apart from these two features, for the past year, it has been mostly bug fixing. Uh, so it's, I think it's pretty good in a good state. And we are focusing a lot on stability for deployments. Okay, so I think the thing this is leading up to is we're gonna be asking the community, should for 1.6, we focus only on stability and completing existing features and not allow 
new initiatives in. And I'm hearing people say that they feel like, except for some testing, we're in a pretty good state and we shouldn't restrict ourselves. I think I heard the same thing. Well, maybe the, the other thing is that that mostly depends on at which stage the uh, the controller is. If the controller is in, in, in beta or final, we will be more likely to focus on stability. Whereas with uh, alpha features, we can probably allow ourselves a little bit of more time spent into actually uh, adding more features than uh, maintaining uh, or improving the stability, or both in equally. OK, I made a note about that. That's a good point. OK. Um, I'll uh, try and take this and um, fig translate it into the answer into the SIG survey, and I can share that before I click Submit at the next meeting. Thanks for your time. If you have any other thoughts on stability versus velocity, please feel free to hit me on Slack or something. Thanks. Thank you. And with that, we have time for open discussion. Did anyone have topics they wanted to discuss today that weren't on the agenda? All right, going once, going twice, going three times. All right, thank you everyone for coming to SIG Apps and um, we'll see you all here next week or online. Thanks again. The recording will be up sometime later today. Bye-bye, y'all.